A brand new Mario Party game was just announced in the latest Nintendo Direct. Super Mario Party Jamboree looks to be filled with a ton of content. So before we get into bigger analyses, let's break down some big details and secrets that you might have missed in the reveal trailer. There are 21 playable characters in the game that we know of so far. The majority of them are back from the original Super Mario Party. Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Yoshi, Wario, Waluigi, Donkey Kong, Rosalina, Bowser, Bowser Jr., Goomba, Koopa Chupa, Shy Guy, Boo, and Monty Mole. And there's an additional five on top of that. Toad and Toadette, who are no longer the hosts, Spike, back from Mario Party 10, Birdo, back from Mario Party Superstars, and brand new to the party, Ninji. Notably, Ninji isn't in the group shot, so it's probably an unlockable character. But 21 is an odd number for playable characters, so could there be more here? After all, there are several characters that seem to be cut from the original Super Mario Party, being Hammerbro, Drybones, Diddy Kong, and Pom Pom. Could we please get an unlockable Pauline? Cause it's kinda shocking that she's not here. Before we move on, there actually may be a 22nd character found here. And I want to thank the Mario Party Madness crew for bringing this to my attention. In the Japanese trailer, we have this quick clip of a boss-like minigame, and there's something strange about it. We can see Charge and Chuck here among the rest of the characters, with the player named Danny over his head. But according to the roster, Danny should be Daisy, so what gives? We can tell she's not behind him or anything, we'd likely see her shadow. Well, it could be a case of trying to hide the fact that he's playable, and using Daisy's icon, but accidentally getting him in trailer footage anyway. Or perhaps this boss minigame has temporary transformations, you know, to power up players. After all, Charge and Chuck looks pretty big here, larger than most other playable characters. It would make sense if it was a temporary ability. But what do you guys think? Is Charge and Chuck playable character number 22, or is this something else entirely? There are seven total confirmed boards for the game, which is a significant increase in the past few Mario Parties. There are five new boards, and they all seem to have unique mechanics and elements, rather than just reaching the star space, similar to Mario Parties 6 through 8. There are also two classic boards here, being Mario's Rainbow Castle from Mario Party 1 and Western Land from Mario Party 2. But the question is, could there be more classics? Perhaps as DLC to the game? Seven is already a lot of boards for a Mario Party game, but getting more would be nice, and just having two classics here feels a little odd. Next up, let's go through the confirmed items for the game. We can see Toadette has a warp block, there's some sort of slower dice block, which Ninji has, triple dice blocks, which Bowser Jr. has, the brand new turbo dice, which is four dice blocks, and according to the narration, allows you to move up to 40 spaces, which confirms that dice blocks are once again 1 through 10, like the classic games and superstars. So the character-specific dice is probably gone and left in the original Super Mario Party. But back to items, there's also this item that Waluigi has, but we can't really make out what it is. Beyond the trailer, we can also see the skeleton key is in the key art, and it looks exactly the same as it did in Mario Party Superstars, there's even the door to use it in Western Land. The Boo Bell is also back from Mario Party Superstars, and some sort of blue seashell item, which is grouped in the item bag on the key art. But what could this be used for? There's a couple of other items seen in the Japanese trailer, being the Dash Mushroom and the Double Dice. We can also see that there's a gold pipe here in the mall. Next up, while the trailer has a big focus on single Joy-Con play and motion controls, just like the original Super Mario Party, the European website for the game clarifies that motion control minigames are not playable online, and while those require Joy-Con, the rest of the minigames can be played on other controllers. So this may mean that the game has an option to turn off motion control minigames, or all of the motion control based minigames are completely relegated to side modes. Either way, it's good to see that multiple controllers will be supported for the game. Next up, out of the 110 confirmed minigames, we've only actually seen two of them that are specifically motion-based. So it's hard to say exactly how many of them will be. Otherwise, many of them might be tied to specific side modes, 
much like the original Super Mario Party, which had certain minigames exclusive to the River Survival and Soundstage modes. Koopathalon builds off an old side mode, being Coinathalon from Mario Party Star Rush on the 3DS, but now supporting many more players. It has the same idea of running laps around the map, with your progress being tied to collecting coins in minigames and surviving through them. What are some other modes in the game? Well, we know there's a cooking-based rhythm game. We see one minigame in the trailer where you're chopping food, and we can see this section on the main hub that looks like a cooking pot with speakers, so that must be where this mode takes place. The key art for the game also features a flipping pancake minigame with music notes, and yeah, that's probably tied to the cooking-based rhythm game as well. The flying minigame in the area with a lighthouse can also be seen in the main area here. And then there's this giant boss battle tower defense looking game. This city-based area matches up with the first few frames of this hot air balloon scene. So it's definitely some sort of dedicated mode as well. And it kind of reminds me of the boss battles from Mario Party 9 and 10. That's quite a few additional modes to this game already. And presumably every area here on these islands is tied to another mode in the game. Though we can also see that some of them are the boards in the game. While online play is mentioned for the game, it's only mentioned in the context of Koopathalon and the side modes. We technically don't know if the rest of the game will feature online play. Seriously, please Nintendo, let us play the standard party mode online, just like Mario Party Superstars. Please? Finally, we have what I dub the Double Bowser Dilemma. So we've seen that Bowser is a playable character. But we've also seen that he's a giant hazard on stages and in minigames. He's clearly seen in King Bowser's Keep and Mario's Rainbow Castle, as well as this giant boss battle minigame and another Koopathalon minigame. So does this mean that Bowser's only playable in specific modes or something? Well, if we take a really close look here, we can make out Bowser as one of the players on Mario's Rainbow Castle. So either the stage hazard version of Bowser gets replaced when he's a player, or there's two Bowsers. Maybe that's why this big one is always glowing purple? And if we look really close, we can even see, despite the large Bowser in King Bowser's Keep, Bowser looks to be one of the player characters at the start. So the two can exist at the same time. The question is, how? And there you have it, a ton of new details that you might have missed about Super Mario Party Jamboree. I am super excited for this game. But of course, we're not done here yet. Stay tuned for our full in-depth analysis coming soon. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Game Explained for plenty more coverage on Super Mario Party Jamboree and more from this latest Nintendo Direct. Until next time, farewell.